everybody, what's going on? It's Misty Hino with Misty Hino's Lego Robotics. And today I have the Spike Prime cable car. You know, I just posted a video about a week ago of the Spike Essential cable car. And as I was building it, I'm like, why can't I do the same thing with Spike Prime? So I'm really excited today for those of you that do Spike Prime to show you how to build it, how it's going to maneuver along a cable. Well, it's not really going to be a real cable, but it's going to look like one. And you're just going to have a lot of fun being able to see how this thing transports itself along a cable. So if you want to see all that, stay with me. He now, Lego Robotics. Okay, so today what I want to do is not only show you how to build this, I'm going to show you how to program this, and then I definitely want to show you how this looks. It looks so cool as it's traveling along. I use a dowel, so I'm going to leave you a link to get a dowel, but you can basically go to Home Depot, Lowe's. I got mine at Michael's, and I'll let you know the dimensions of it. But first, let's go ahead and show you just a little bit about this, and then we'll get to the programming. Okay, so everything is attached to these two um, picture frames. So the hub is inside. We're going to utilize the uh, distance sensor. We're going to use the pressure sensor. And then we definitely have that one large motor that's going to uh, basically maneuver along the cable. Now, what I had to do was I didn't like how this thing was going. Um, it wasn't going straight. So if you see, as we build it today, I had to build a channel that would go along the cable and this thing would not wobble back and forth because that's what was happening as I initially built this. And then I had to go back and modify it so the cable would go right in between there and that's where we want this thing to travel on so let's now go to the building instructions
Okay, so now that we got this thing built, let's go ahead and see what the program looks like. Okay, so now that we have it programmed, you're gonna have to modify your program depending on what you have this going on. If you can see from the video, I'm using two chairs. And so this program won't work unless you have something that will uh, be able to be seen by this distance sensor and definitely will be able to be uh, hit by this pressure sensor. So you're gonna have to be able to have something like my two chairs, something compatible that's gonna allow this program to work. But now let's go ahead and see this thing in action.